for the benefit of the working classes of Liverpool and Manchester. Those funds were used to build a hospital and nurses home, a workman's hospital, club and theatre, various recreation grounds and libraries, plus the David Lewis National Epilepsy Centre. I was first approached by, I think it was uh, Maria Curran of Kensington Regeneration, who was herself involved, and she said, we've got this interesting project to restore a Jewish cemetery in the ward, and I said I didn't even know, so what a Jewish cemetery in the ward? Like almost everybody else who lives here, really. And she told me about it and invited me to their fundraising committee, and so I came along to the first meeting um, a couple of years ago now, and I've been hooked ever since, really. I don't know, I, I always think there's something Jewish about me, I don't know what, <laughs> but there is an Abraham in, when I was looking through the family history, there's a, a, an Abraham, so I'd like to find out whether there is any, whether I'm Jewish, <laughs> and I've always had an interest. In some respects, because I haven't got access to any money, you know, I'm not particularly good getting down on my knees weeding, so I try to contribute um, in terms of publicity, making sure that people hear about the cemetery, helping a little bit with um, helping to find some funding opportunities and ask the people to stop doing it to explain that where they were throwing their rubbish was at the cemetery and that there were in fact children buried where the rubbish was falling. And also to get the council to help with the clean-up within the cemetery to come and take away all of the masses of rubbish that was here. Okay, we don't want to go too far off because the next one is this fantastic obelisk here. This is the grave of Jonas Rees and tragically he committed suicide in 1877 in the Northwestern Hotel as it was. Whatever denomination the cemetery was, I think, I would feel exactly the same. It's a very special place. The people who are buried here, and some of them are famous, special people. Some of them are not famous, but still special people, and I, I feel the same passion, I think, irrespective of whether I was Jewish or not. One of the things I'd really like is for more people to be aware of the cemetery, for us to be able to open it up regularly. For Jewish people, in the first instance, who might have family buried here and their ancestors, people who are interested in genealogy, children, um, school children, we ought to be able to offer tours. You know, children studying Victorian history could learn a lot by finding out about the people who lived and died and were buried here through that period. There's obviously, religious education um, classes. And also citizenship classes would benefit from coming here because then they could learn about how the community the probation service, the environment people and so on, volunteers have all worked together on the refurbishment. So, very interested in bringing schools along. I think we should put ourselves on the heritage trail. I suppose make it more accessible, which is the main thing. Um, because are, I think a lot more people would be interested in it. There's a lot of quite famous people buried here. And um, if you can get people to come and see where they're buried, get more people to come here anyway. Well I can't see the inscription but I'm sure it must be somebody of importance. Tell me about it. Yeah this is Charles Mosley. He was born in Liverpool in 1797. He was born into the wealthiest and most influential family of the Jewish community. His grandfather was the head of the community, Simon Joseph. So he was very well connected. He was by profession a banker and he was in business with his two brothers and his brother-in-law in a concern called Barnard Bank, which was a private bank. Um, they were very successful for 40 years, and in the meantime, Charles got involved in politics. He was a member of the Liberal Party, and he was elected as a town councillor in 1857. And we have to remember that at that point, Liverpool wasn't a city. It didn't become a city until 1893. And in 1863, he was proposed as mayor of the town of Liverpool by Robert Gladstone, William Gladstone's brother. And he served as the first Jewish mayor of Liverpool. Uh, we've been working here for about two years now, uh, <coughs> using offenders who are serving community orders with unpaid work requirements. Uh, what effectively was community service. So we've used those to clear the graveyard in terms of uh, remove some of the, uh, the trees and the ivy from the walls. I mean, it's quite nice that they can be involved in a project and see the change over a period of time. Because quite often some of, these, uh, some of these guys are with us probably for the best part of 12 months. And so over that period of 12 months, then they can see the progression that they've made and they get some empathy with the project and, uh, and get some pride in the work that they do. During the summer, we try and get down at least sort of once a week in the winter it's more difficult. Some of the graves are very difficult to walk between um, because you're not quite sure where you're putting your feet. Um, but I think the pathways mainly 
because as much as you can walk around the outside, you can't really get to easily get to those in the middle. Do you normally visit cemeteries or just special ones? <laughs> I do actually. I'm quite. <laughs> I'm just fascinated with history. That's all. So my grandson's been around with us today, and he's actually does seem quite interested. Yeah. So as you can see, this project is an ongoing project and a long-term one. Not only do we want to refurbish the cemetery as a place of rest for those who have deceased, but we also want after that to open it as a visitor attraction for people who want to come and learn about our great city and the history of it and those who helped make it so great. We need your help in a variety of different ways. We need volunteers to help improve and maintain the condition of the cemetery and the surrounding area and to help clean graffiti from gravestones. We need matched funding from people who are prepared to support our bid to the Heritage Lottery Fund and we also need support from the families of those buried here in funding the restoration of their ancestors' tombstones. For more information about this or any aspect of our project, please visit our website at www.deanroadcemetery.com.